Badrinath is it's so old it's mentioned in the Skanda Purana and we know that Purana means the ancient history of, of India of Bharat as it's known originally India going back millions and millions and millions of years so this holy place is people have visited this place saints have visited rishis and aspiring spiritual seekers have visited this place since time and more there's a whole list we have here um, great personalities well of course Uddhava we hear in the Srimad Bhagavatam in 11th canto that Krishna sent Uddhava here to bathe in the holy waters which emanated, emanate from Krishna's lotus feet we know the compiler of the Vedas Srila Vyasadev is living very near here he's still present here he compiled the Vedic literatures at the beginning of Kali Yuga um, Gautama Rishi visited here Kapila Dev, Kashyapa Muni, uh, Shankaracharya, uh, Ramanujacharya, Madhvacharya. It's even said that Lord Nityananda visited here during his his um, his pilgrimages, and um, yeah, people have been coming since time time immemorial. Um, they come to take darshan of uh, the deity, who is known as Bhadri Narayan or some people call him Badri Vishal. This deity is said to be a self-manifested Shalagram Shila that um, is two feet tall. Been worshipped here since time immemorial. That's why many pilgrims come. Um, you may not know, but Buddhism be was spread throughout India at a particular time in the history. And uh, during the period where Buddhism was very prominent, unfortunately this deity was neglected and it was thrown into the river here. But a thousand years ago, Adi Shankar, Shankaracharya, who was an incarnation of Lord Shiva, he came here and he found that deity in the river. And he installed the deity here and had the temple built. So the temple is about a thousand years old. A lot of, lot of history here. So during the winter time it becomes very, very cold here. So cold that the priests have to leave. And what they do is they light a ghee lamp in front of the deity. And then Narada Muni and great demigods, they come here and they worship the deity for six months. And when springtime comes, the priests, they come back up, they open the door and the ghee lamp is still burning. So it takes it's great us here to come here. Of course, we've come here. We've taken the convenience of the helicopters. But even that, staying in this cold area and walking in this high heights and getting a little bit of altitude sickness and a little upset tummy from the, what we're eating here, it's, it's of no consequence to us because we have the darshan of this beautiful deity. We get to see so many genuine sadhus. Actually, here, sadhus come. We've met sadhus from all the way down to the tip of India, from Bengal, from UP, from Kashmir. This again is one of the char dhams of greater India. People become because of its history and because the spiritual potency. You can actually feel it. Just like Srila Prabhupada writes in the Nectar of Devotion that if one comes to Vrindavan or to Mathura and one just spends a fortnight there, he mentions even a new person, just someone new to spiritual life, he can feel the purity of that place and he can feel a change of heart. So we've come here to take shelter of, of Badri Narayan, a beautiful deity. There's a deity of Uddhava there, there's a deity of Nar Nara Narayan Rishi, there's a deity of Garuda, it's a very beautiful temple. And we found that um, we've been the, the people of, of Badrinath, the priests of Badrinath, they are very accommodating. Um, everywhere we go they say Hare Krishna, or they say Om Narayan. <laughs> You know, there are a lot of impersonalists come here as well, so they'll greet you. Om Namo Narayan. I, I offer my obeisance to you, Narayan. Of course, our philosophy is exactly the opposite. But they're sadhus, they're renounced. Their goal is the Brahman, the, the uh, effulgence of the Lord. But everyone, the shopkeepers, the priests, uh, the different types of gyanis and yogis, when they see us, they go, oh, Hare Krishna. Many of them say, we have been to Vrindavan. We have been to your Krishna Balaram temple. So that just shows what an influence Srila Prabhupada has had in spreading Krishna consciousness around the world. These sadhus, these rishis, these priests, these, just the people here, 
they're very appreciative that we're sharing their culture with the world. Actually, as we've stated many times in our videos, this is the culture of the spiritual world. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Aham Bija Pradapitam, that he's the seed giving father of all living entities. And as George Harrison said, <laughs> everyone's Krishna conscious. Some know it and, and some don't. So a saintly person, he sees all living entities equally in the sense he sees their spiritual nature, which is servants of Krishna. So this we're spreading this philosophy around the world and the people of India, they appreciate it. When you come to an area where there's many sadhus and there's pujas going on, chanting of different mantras, bathing in sacred rivers, it's a very, very auspicious atmosphere. We come here and we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And my humble self, when I come before all these deities we've seen at Yamuno tree and Gungo tree and Kedarnath and here at Badrinath, my humble prayer is that I, I can become a good disciple of my spiritual master, Sridhar Prabhupada, to help him in his mission of spreading Krishna consciousness around the world. I pray that whatever desires, material desires that are there in my heart will be burst asunder and sent to a distant place. I pray that um, I can become a medium by which the message of Srila Vyasadeva in the Four Vedas compiled in the form of our six Goswamis, the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought to the Western countries, that I can speak in such a way that people's hearts will be touched. Because this is Kali Yuga, Kaler Dosha Nidhe Rajan, Astyeka Mahaguna. Shukadev Goswami tells Maharaj Pariksha, this, is an age, this, this age of Kali is an ocean of inauspiciousness. The only way we can break through the terrible influence of Kali Yuga, Kirtanadeva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangha Parambraja, by chanting Hare Krishna and explaining the glories of the Holy Name. So I pray to all these deities, to these holy rivers, to the Himalayan mountains who are non-different than the Lord Himself, that, that I can be an instrument in speaking so that people will get the message and start practicing Krishna consciousness and maybe be just as fortunate as we were to one day come to these holy places. Why not? These holy places are opening their arms to all of society to come here and become purified. 
I also pray for some Nam Ruchi, some taste for the Holy Name, which is the Yuga Dharma. And I'm also praying that the whole world can become flooded with Krishna consciousness. So this we've learned from our spiritual master. So we conclude our Purukami here and the char doms of the, of the Himalayas and this mood that we can take our good fortune, whatever we've gained here, whatever sins have been washed away, whatever material desires have been thrown to a distant place, whatever taste for the holy name, whatever blessings we've gotten from the sadhus and the holy rivers and the deities and the trees, this stick <laughs> was given to me by a very nice sadhu. Um, this stick actually comes from this area of Badrinath. Only place in the world you can find this tree from where this stick comes from is a little bit higher than Badrinath. You have to go through the snow and these trees grow and then you have to pray to the tree, the sadhus say. You come back four days, you cut the tree like that and then this stick is said to be very auspicious. It keeps all evil away. It especially keeps snakes away. The sadhus, you always see them sleeping with it but it keeps the, all evil influences away. Of course, we have that in the form of the Holy Name, but the more the merrier. Whatever blessings we can get to continue a long life of preaching Krishna consciousness, we'll take that. So, one sadhu gave me this gift of, the, of his stick. He had it many years. He said, so that you can go on preaching the message of Krishna consciousness um, around the world. And Prabhupada told me personally, he, Prabhupada gave me his dhoti. In 1971, I was on my way to France. I was a little nervous. Papa had ordered us to go to France and preach. I was just 20 years old. And he gave me his dhoti. And he said, Indra a gift from a Vaishnava is a very special thing. So this was a yogi, so a transcendentalist. He gave me his, I don't take it as an ordinary stick. I take it as a blessing. I'll carry this back to the West and I will continue preaching Krishna consciousness by the blessings of Srila Prabhupada. So that's why we come to this Holy Dham. We've had a wonderful, mystical, I have to say, a mystical experience. If you can in your lifetime, I'm 70, I made it. We had some extra help, but um, come to these Holy Dhams, become purified, and we pray to achieve the highest goal, Goloka Vrindavan, one day. O glorious to Shri Prabhupada, Chardams ki, Yamunotri ki, Gangotri ki, Kedarnath ki, and Bhadrinath ki. Go Priminandi, Hare Krishna.